Hello, Eric. everyone. Uh, welcome to the Museum of the Boeing meeting. Uh, officially, we start in 30 seconds, but um, I see that we have um, a quorum. Uh, we have eight participants. Uh, it looks like we don't have any uh, members of the public yet, but it still could happen. Anyway, you'll have to bear with me because my other computer is kind of um, misfunctioning a little bit, and I need this one to see you uh, wonderful people. So I'm going to be working off my phone. Um, but uh, it'll, it'll be good because we have really good staff to jump on here if we need them. Anyway, um, so the first item is welcome. And uh, secondly is, well, welcome. And also welcome to Heather Reed. Uh, she's the interim supervisor of culture and events. Uh, you have a big job ahead of you because we've all been trapped in our little rabbit warrens and uh, and stuff like that. And people are gonna be chomping at the bit to do things this, uh, the, you know, the bounce of the summer and, uh, and into the holiday season. You gotta, if you'd like to tell us a little bit about yourself because this meeting doesn't go long, let, uh, go ahead. Thank you, thank you for the welcome. Uh, my name is Heather Reed and uh, I am acting uh, supervisor for culture and events. Um, and I've been working with the town for 16 years. So I've been here a while, but I worked in various departments. Uh, I started with the clerk's department and then uh, moved on to uh, the planning and engineering department. And then uh, 10 years ago, I started in the parks and culture department as the administrative assistant to the director. And, but my background is in uh, culture and heritage. And I have a, a master's degree in archeology span and a, a, a uh, BA in anthropology. And I also, uh, mm. while I was working here at the town, I did go through uh, a part, um, an online and part-time uh, course uh, certificate through the Ontario Museum Association for a museum study certificate. So, and I also uh, worked in museums and archives uh, for years and volunteered as well. So I've been heavily involved in that. And then I, I have a culture component as well. Um, be, I'm a uh, a musician myself with, in a band. And then also um, I've been volunteering uh, with the Tottenham Bluegrass Festival over the years and also uh, the Gibson Center. So a uh, wide variety of culture and uh, heritage background. And I'm so excited. So I know we have a big road ahead of us, but uh, I've been resting. So I'm all rested up for it. I'm good to go. <laughs> wow. Welcome again. And I, I just wanted to take a moment as well to congratulate Vanessa because um, as of Monday, June 28th, she will officially uh, been the successful recipient of the uh, coordinator of heritage and collections full-time position. So she's gonna be moving into a full-time position here at the museum and uh, between the two of us, there's no stopping us, I don't think. So congratulations to Vanessa. <laughs> here, here. Anybody else? Okay, you've been you've been welcomed. <laughs> Thank you. I'm I'm impressed uh, with your curriculum vitae, and it, it seems like the arrow has always been pointing at the Museum of the Boy. No matter what you were doing, it was always mm -hmm. pointing at the museum. Great stuff. Yeah, I've been patient, so I'm, uh, <laughs> hopefully I don't let anyone down. <laughs> well, you know what? Sometimes patience uh, works better than. Uh, being frenetic at things because uh, you don't burn bridges easily when you're patient because you sit back and you have a sober second thought. I, I try. I am from Newfoundland though, so I can <laughs> sometimes sometimes I can run a little hot too, but I try. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I yeah I have many friends from Newfoundland and they're all different uh, from the east side to Victoria to. Uh, um, Little Heart Seas to uh, to New uh, St. John's Hair Bay. I just had a friend who moved to Gander, and I uh, used to work with a couple of people from Twillingate, and they didn't know each other. But I thought everybody in Twillingate would have known each other, but now they do. Anyway, <laughs> great stuff, uh, great heritage. Um, I, maybe the island will want to drag you back because of your uh, your skills. Anyway, uh, confirmation of the agenda. Um, I need a motion to read uh, any any comment about the agenda. And uh, other than that, I need a motion to receive the agenda. I need a mover. 
Okay, Ron Moore. Oh, do you want to speak? No, I just wanted to uh, say, Gary, that to, to welcome uh, Heather, I've changed my background to Lonzo Meadows. <laughs> I did archaeology on the Northern Peninsula for many years, and I knew that that's what it was right away. I didn't do Viking uh, archaeology. I did prehistoric archaeology, but I recognize it right away. So now you're making me homesick. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yes, uh, an interesting place. They even used to mine um, asbestos up in uh, in Bay Verde or Green Bay and stuff. I read a lot. I just haven't been there, and I haven't quite got off uh, out of Nova Scotia to get to Newfoundland, but that's one of my goals. Anyway, so do I have a mover and a seconder for a confirmation of the agenda? Uh, moved by Ron Moore, seconded by Councillor Sainsbury. All in favor? Yes. Okay. Uh, we have no requests to speak. So we'll move on to um, item really one, and that's the review of the summary report. Uh, we'll have to have a motion to uh, receive the summary report. Uh, I'll get a mover and seconder and then uh, Somebody can go uh, and and make um, one, one uh, either Pam or Heather or Vanessa can speak to that mover. Moved by Harvey and seconded by Councillor Sainsbury. Okay, floor is open for if we want to delve into the summary report. Okay. No issues, let's move on. Uh, all in favor of uh, receiving a summary report? Carried. Okay, we have um, no deputations. So then we can move on to correspondence. Um, I understand that correspondence will be uh, staff verbal reports on uh, the Heritage Lead uh, re uh, regarding Museum Month and a report uh, uh, from uh, Heather about the uh, McDonald uh, Cabin programming. You're up first, Vanessa. Oh. Okay, hi everybody. Um, I'll just give a quick update on what was done for May's Museum Month. Uh, so everything being virtual this year, the focus was on getting information out virtually. Um, every week there were some social media posts focusing on the collection essentially. And we did things like guess the artifact. There was some good interaction with residents on our um, social media pages. And the main focus was the launch of our new online, which I believe you all should have received a link to that. And if you haven't, I can get that to you. But um, we are now, um, we have a town website, but this is a virtual exhibit. So it's a main exhibit title. And then within that exhibit, there's several stories. And um, throughout the year, we'll keep adding to that. And then next year, we'll be expanding on that um, and looking at a 3D option to bring to life even more of the museum and get more of the collection available to the public from an accessibility standpoint also. Um, it, it's, we used a company called Treasured and they have used their platform to also advertise our exhibit and they get thousands of visitors a month to their sites. So it directly links to the town website and visitors like share the traffic basically. And um, yeah, I don't know, have any of you seen the website? Awesome. Councilor Sainsbury? I had to unmute, sorry. Okay. <laughs> uh, I just wanted, could we get that again from you? So that's all we have. We don't have to go back to the town and type in this and that and the other. We just keep the link and we can save it. And we just need to go to that as members of the board. Yeah, there's various ways that you can access it. So the easiest way is through the museum webpage on the town site. And you just click where it says exhibits. You just click 
the link that's there, but the link that you were given as well via email, I believe, will work just fine. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And that's pretty much the update on that. We it, it was a month long. Every week there were posts going on social media. Okay. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Okay, let's move on to uh, Heather uh, to speak about the McDonald Log Cabin program planning. It, at least that's what it says here. Thank you. Um, so I've been here about five weeks now and I'm just trying to collect as much information as possible about um, our collections and um, just the museum, how it's been operating. And so obviously um, it's a big feather in our cap that we have reconstructed the log cabin. It's, it's gorgeous. And then I, I got to have a tour. Nessa gave me a tour uh, the second or third day that I started. And um, so I think what we need to do now is come up with, it's a bit too formal to call it a business plan. Uh, it's going to be part of the, the department's business plan, but we do need to come up with sort of a program plan about how we want to use that space. Um, I saw in your summary that you had uh, mentioned about wedding photography and uh, we are including a fee in the user uh, fees and charges bylaw for the town where we are looking at adding that fee so that we will have a set fee for if someone does request it. But the biggest side of that is marketing, as you probably already know, we need to market that. Uh, but I want to look at the space on a bigger level uh, with for Vanessa and I to look at it at a bigger level and come up with a program plan a comprehensive program plan to see how we uh, look at the space, how we use it um, and how we market it. So I think that's something that will probably take us a couple months to do. Uh, and, but we're excited to do it and then come back to the committee with, uh, with a plan that we can discuss and, and kind of delve into a little bit further. But it, we'll be looking at, we'll be looking at options, the whole, whole spectrum of options that you could think of from children's programming to, uh, renting the space for weddings or meetings to, you know, do we want to have programs where people are, you know, where we're uh, a replication kind of thing where people are dressed up? Is that just going to be in the summertime? So it would, it would be looking at the space, but also looking at time as well. So what times of year would we be, uh, you know, Christmas time is obviously a big time to have uh, that type of programming. So just to get to understand the space better, and um, so that'll be, like I say, I think it would take us a couple months and come back maybe at the next meeting and update you further on what we have planned. Hey, thank you. Councillor Sainsbury. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to Heather. Um, because of Darcy Bishop and economic development, can we have a little box maybe in the future on the Town of New Tecumseh's website that says space available for lease and then examples of what they can be used for under our policies and that that the uh, log cabin will become part of that rather than people thinking oh maybe I can have a wedding at the museum. I think um, that that's an excellent uh, point um, and so I can uh, I'll note that and I'm sure Pam will note it and and we can look into that because right now it is just through the PRC web page that people are booking for parties and weddings and so forth. Uh, one of the things that we're looking at as well as um, there's a good, uh, there's quite a healthy interest in movie shoots, as you guys already know, probably uh, what went on in Beaton with Netflix. And uh, so there's we're one of my one of the things we're doing is to look at movie shoots as well, because this obviously would be a good uh, location for some of that and and to look at promoting that. But of course, we have to promote it in a safe way. We have to look at risks. We have to make sure we're preserving the artifacts. It is an artifact. So we have to look at it from that point of view. Um, but yes, I agree that we should be looking at uh, things other than just private parties and looking at other ways to make revenue. Supplementary, Mr. Chair. Um, Narawasaga Futures does a lot of the film booking and everything. Are we going yes. to be stepping on their toes because that's kind of how they are able to survive? So are it's, we gonna be working with them or are we gonna be working separately from them? In, the right now we work with them uh, meaning that we're a component um, of many of the permits that a movie shoot would have to get. And from my understanding, not all of the features are the people that kind of help them coordinate those permits, whether it's a noise exemption 
or from the town, primarily from the town or road occupancy permit. Um, so it's, it's also something that on my list of things that I want to investigate is to see where movie shoots fit in with the town. Uh, but whatever, however that fits into the status quo, I want to make sure that if we have spaces to offer here, that would be beneficial to them that, like you say, to make sure that they're promoted through economic development or through Nottawa Saga Futures, that we'd be informing them that we would be open for business. Uh, just one last question through you, Mr. Chair, to Heather. Um, because of agreements, because of liability, and does that, is that run past the town solicitor when you do these write-ups for these outside agencies coming in to do things in no matter what the building may be, including the museum. From what I understand with our booking procedures, um, yes, the, the short answer is yes, because we have what's called conditions of use. That is, it acts like an agreement. Um, and so those conditions of use, I believe are run by the town solicitor on a regular basis, especially if we have a new condition of use that we had to add. For example, during COVID, I believe that maybe some of those COVID conditions of use may have been passed through the town solicitor. I'm not in that business unit, so I'm probably not the best person to speak on it. But just from my old role as administrative assistant to the director, I kind of got to see a bird's eye view of everything. So the short answer is yes. Um, if we have anything that uh, is a change to our conditions of use or agreements, and typically, yes, it would run through our town solicitor. And, and again... We would be looking at all those risks with, with the cabin, for example, or any building that we, even if it was this, this building is an artifact as well. So we would never want to put anything in jeopardy uh, for the preservation of, of the artifacts. So we don't want to duplicate. I don't want to upset any other group because they're good groups in our town that we've always had a good relationship with. So when you get together to meet who's going to do what, that would be great. Thanks. Exactly. And that's part that that's what we call stakeholder consultation, basically. So, so we would be looking at, um, uh, at that, and they would be the first people that we would speak to. Really, would be Nottawa Saga Futures. Thank you. Awesome. Anybody else? Now, Pam, do I need a motion to receive these staff verbal reports, or do we just move on? Um, I'll move them. For the record, I'll just yeah, move them. For the record. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, moved by, Councilor, moved by Councillor Sainsbury, seconded by Joan Truax from ESSA. Joan, I got to get you into the meeting here. So Joan on the phone. <laughs> you, you, you second that motion. All in favor? Yeah, I Aye. agree with. Carried. Mm. Okay, let's, uh, let's move on to the work plan. Now, we have something that looks like maybe we're going to be putting that up on the screen. Um, the updated work plan, which we've been working with, which uh, shows uh, potential dates and, and, and uh, targets and stuff like that. Who wants to take this? I can speak, Vanessa, if that's okay, to the work plan. Is that okay, Vanessa, or did you want to speak sure. to it? Sure, that's yeah. fine, Heather, you may speak. Um, and I am, I don't know if mm -hmm. you can all share the work plan. Pardon me? Um, I'm sharing the work plan. Are you guys able to see it? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, so I, I have looked over the work plan that uh, Vanessa has put together, and I don't think there's anything huge that stands out that mm -hmm. we would be amending in any way since my time here. Um, I see that the McDonald log cabin is in there. So we've slightly expanded that. Maybe we will update the work plan a little bit just to see that we're looking at a, a, a comprehensive program plan for that rather than um, just uh, the artifact of a fireplace or something. So, um, and other than that, it looks good. And we'll be speaking about the wall of honor on this agenda. So that will be updated a little bit once I fill you in a little bit about my thoughts on that. Um, and I see that there's a budget request as well. So uh, we can talk about items for next meeting, um, but if we have uh, budget requests, they should be getting in now because uh, we're, we're mm -hmm. starting to look at our budgets now for next year. But we can speak to that about uh, the next meeting or the uh, items for next meeting. And again, we spoke about the museum grounds as photography for special occasions, and that's definitely something we can market um, 
uh, and hopefully, you know, with restrictions lifting, maybe we'll actually get someone who wants to take some photographs here. And, um, and then Vanessa has been uh, exploring virtual experiences and, and keep in mind that Vanessa was, was only three days a week up until now. And so it's going to be a transition with me being here and with Vanessa being full time. Uh, this looks like a great work plan and we'll update it as, as we go along. Great. Comments? Um, yeah, we have to switch back. <laughs> yeah, there we are. <laughs> Just. <laughs> okay, let's go with Ron. Ron, Ron Moore. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Actually, this is a question from, for Vanessa. Vanessa, would it be possible for you to send me the guidelines on the uh, deaccessioning of equipment or of, uh, of artifacts, please? Um, I don't have any like that on file, and I'm just kind of curious what the process is. Sure. So um, we will be updating our collections policy as well. Um, so I guess I could send what we've got, and then we'll resend an updated one. That's great. Thank you very much. I might, I'll send it to the entire committee. Great. Uh, Councillor Sainsbury? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we have a, a museum in Richard Stovall uh, in Bandorf, been there for years, and it has a log cabin, and it has a fireplace, but it has a fake thing. They don't burn the wood and stuff in it, I don't think, because of insurance and liability. But if sure. someone could email, uh, uh, Dory Billich retired, so I don't know the new, uh, we used to refer to them as curators, shows you how ancient I am. I'm sure they have a new title now in Richard Stovall as well. But if they could photograph uh, take pictures for you of their log cabin and their interior and the fireplace in particular, and then ask if there's any liability issues or how they utilize it and on what days they might utilize it and, and so on. That would be really helpful because that is an amazing thing. Plus the barn that was constructed and they put fish in the stream and so on. So they made it a living museum. So kids could come up on the bus and, and fish and do things right within the grounds of the museum, mm, which good. we got the Boyne River. So there's something we could do as well. So anyway, just for right now, I'm talking about the log cabin and the fireplace issue on that list of things. Mm -hmm. But I know that it has been done and, and they are amazing. And, and they're more authentic. And I know the other was a prop. But it was still nice because it, it was glowing and the kids liked it because it looked it looked warm even if it didn't throw a lot of heat. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we we can reach out to them and then that would be we'd be looking at uh, you know a budget item as well as again this all kind of comes together because with the program plan and budget consideration. Uh, but we'll definitely uh, reach out to them and see if they can give us some photos and get their get their uh, advice as well. Thank you. Okay. Uh, anything else on that particular uh, item, the work plan? If not, we can move on to the Wall of Honor update. And there is a motion that we had, that is being thought about to have Heather investigate improvements to the Wall of Honor program. Heather? Yeah, anything? so I'll, I'll kind of go chronologically. Um, so in 2020, uh, there was a recipient for 2020, and but that recipient who will, who shall remain nameless right now um, will. We, what we would like to do uh, is present the uh, award at a future council meeting. We're thinking um, in the fall, so we're looking at September, or October, and all of you would be invited, of course, um, as virtual um, uh, participants or guests to that. Uh, just because we don't, I don't see restrictions lifting anytime soon that we'd be able to resume uh, what was typical, the status quo. So we'll be, Vanessa and I will be working on that to have that recipient um, receive their award. And then in 2021, um, we didn't, you know, there wasn't a supervisor over here and Vanessa was working part-time and sometimes she wasn't working at all, unfortunately, because of uh, layoffs and things. So um, in 2020, because we, of course, in 2020, you received the uh, recommendations for 2021. So, so basically what we're suggesting for 2021 recipient is to combine it with 2022 so that we, 
we award two at once. So we won't be having a ceremony. We won't be having looking at anything for this year. Um, but however, I think there needs to maybe take a step back from this program and take a look at different options around the program. Um, and I'd like to get your all of your input into that. From my my own my current investigations that I've done so far, it sounds like um, that you've been having traditionally a physical ceremony, but it seems like the ceremony is not as well attended as it used to be maybe. And, um, and we're not getting as many nominations as we used to get. So uh, I just need to look at um, options around that and, and look at what uh, those options with you and then we can kind of go forward from there. Um, and, and I'd like to get, I don't know, whatever your thoughts are right now on the wall of honor program itself or if you've, if you've participated in it in the past. Okay, uh, Fran. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, through you to Heather. Um, perhaps we could consider doing it once we're all able to be back together again, the same time as we do Canada Day with all of the people we honor and take it back hopefully one day to the park instead of in the NTRC which is an outdoor venue across from the museum and, uh, and do everything at once so that everybody knows whether it be sports or heritage or whatever we, the number of the senior of the year, whatever, whom, whomever we honor and, and make it a one day humongous thing on, on Canada Day. Well, that you're talking Canada Day 2022, are you not? Yes, because I think Heather just said we can't can't do the honoring of the person this year. If we can't even start again until September or October, it will almost be over. Plus, we need to do it in the middle of next year because next year's election year and the and the uh, councils of all towns will change of the five who are part of the museum on the going. So it's just a thought. Uh, it's just something to think about. I think that's a great thought, and and I, I've noted it, and that'll be part of. The different options that we're going to look at and discuss uh, once we come up with concrete thought like options of option one option two option three but that's definitely can be considered yes to have uh, because we're awarding other awards at um, Canada Day we could just do them all together I think the youth there's a youth award that gets awarded and so on so that's definitely one option thank you well uh, in I was just going to ask if, if for the 2020 recipient who's already like you heart has been chosen, are you all okay with going to a, a future council meeting just so we can at least get that award given or yeah. yeah so we'll proceed with that maybe at least. Sure. And okay. Do you need a motion, Mr. Chair? Well, okay, yeah, we will. Because uh, it's kind of official and they'll have to organize for it at the council chamber. I understand. Uh, I, I just wanted to add though, that uh, we also have a Canada Day in uh, Bradford, West Gullenberry, and we do, you know, have the, uh, you know, everything from, you know, senior of the year and such like that. And uh, forgive me, but I kind of like the separate uh, uh, ceremony at the Museum of the Boyne. And uh, the last few years, actually we've done okay uh, we had half of Bradford up there a, a couple of years ago, and uh, uh, and it was kind of neat that uh, I'm still trying to get buy-in down there, and you know we're trying to get buy-in from Innisfil and stuff like that. So if we can get them to come across and drive across Highway 89, and uh, you know make the journey from Cookstown or wherever, that it's uh, that's a good thing for the museum. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, like. So uh, Maybe that's a good idea is to make a whole separate day for honoring people, no matter their, their volunteerism in, a, in these towns, as you're saying, instead of Canada Day, D do another honoring volunteerism, like Volunteer okay. Week or whenever they have that in that way, because I know the people from Agilas and so on, they always came to the museum building, as long as they can still all come and be together. Well, my thoughts were that the museum was going to be the star and that the uh, person uh, or people that are nominated um, had, you know, some significant, uh, um, uh, you know, contribution to the Museum of the Boyne and to uh, historical perspective and, uh, 
you know, the pioneer way of life, I guess. Uh, although I'm not sure how we can, uh, we can look at that anymore. It's, uh, it's a different narrative out there. And, uh, you know, so I, I re really would like to make the museum the focus. And um, I'm not sure, Heather, how you're going to be able to handle that because uh, as we know, um, things, as I, I guess to be as PC as I can, the narrative out there is different than it was. That's right. I think the narrative always changes because we're humans <laughs> and Absolutely. we change. So we yeah. change, so human culture changes. And that's, that's why we all keep reading our books about the past, right? Because we're fascinated. Um, and one day someone will be fascinated by us, hopefully. But, yeah. um, but I think that it's a very good point. And I think it's something that is on our minds, I would almost say daily. Um, and that museums have to adapt, uh, and especially museums with a focus on uh, historic history, meaning uh, and, and colonialism. And um, so we we need to be sensitive to that. We need to adapt to it. We need to be inclusive. We need to, uh, and it's it's a narrative that's going on uh, internationally, really, but definitely um, all over Canada uh, and. Um, it's something that Vanessa and I will be trying to stay um, in tune with and, and we'll see how that plays out. Um, and with, we'll be bringing things forward to you as the committee, of course, if anything changes. But right now we are a museum that looks at the, uh, it's the history of South Simcoe. That's our mandate. So um, we're going to be still looking at that, but how to be inclusive and sensitive around um, the issues that are going on. That, that might um, mean that the, um, the focus of the museum may have to change because, uh, you know, uh, there were no steel plows in, in, uh, you know, in, in this area before 1830 or any of those kinds of things. And, and uh, when we, uh, when we now have, any kind of development coming, we we do ar archaeological studies uh, to ensure that um, everything is recognized. So I'm not sure how whether the museum ultimately is is what it is, or does it become a uh, a museum of uh, of area culture uh, or historical perspective? Uh, you know, because uh, there's 24,000 years of of history in in the Americas, um, and uh, you know, it was always changing and somebody else carving an empire. And I'm going to use those words because that's what human beings do on every continent except the Antarctica. Um, they carve out something, and uh, I think we need to recognize uh, who did what and uh, what happened. Just saying, and I guess I, I guess we're getting into a whole new conversation about museums. Uh, the County Museum, when you go there, they have, uh, you know, they've got some uh, Aboriginal perspective there. And uh, it, it's very interesting. So let's, um, let's think about those things. It's definitely on our radar. Um, and uh, we're just starting to get our head wrapped around even the terms to use, honestly and we want to be using appropriate terms. And, um, and so uh, like my, my background is my husband, my husband is indigenous. He's in, he's a uh, part Inuit and part Newfoundlander. <laughs> so uh, it's something that I live with every day. It's not, it's not uh, kind of something that is um, we talk about a lot at home. So, and he, he carries on his, both of his cultures, traditions uh, actively and, um, so it's something that Vanessa and I are talk about and we want to be more educated. Quite frankly, I think at this point, we, we need to get more, more educated and all of us need to get more educated and then we'll see how it goes. Uh, but it's, it's a big picture item for sure. Well, interesting. Uh, uh, Ron, do you have uh, something to say? Oh, I, just a couple of comments. I think it's gonna be very interesting as we move forward to the future with the new normal because a lot of things are gonna change. And uh, lately I've been enjoying um, going to junior kindergarten with my grandson who goes actually to a school in Toronto. 
And I, I'm impressed by the fact that at their school, they start every morning with their morning uh, activities with O Canada, of course, but also a land acknowledgement, mm -hmm. which prompts discussion, which I think is important. And, and it's a very free thinking school because they cost, or every day of the year, they also fly the pride flag. So it's, uh, it's encouraging from my point of view to see that, um, that in junior kindergarten, he's five years old, you may hear him in the background, here. he's still at school here with them. But it, it's, it's encouraging to me that to see things will be changing as we move forward. And, and I'm excited to uh, even have a small part of it through what we're doing here with the museum. Great, thank you. I guess I, my comment is that uh, uh, we all need to be inclusive um, and uh, nobody should be left behind, even old white haired guys like me. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just saying that uh, we still learn and uh, uh, it's an interesting conundrum that the world is in, um, not only in, uh, in uh, Canada. Anyway, um, thank you for sharing what you were talking about, Heather. I, I, uh, I get it. Anyway, anybody else? Okay. So if I have a motion here that well, um, would be the motion that was suggested by Pam was uh, to have uh, Heather investigate the improvements to or potential improvements to the Wall of Honor program. And uh, Mr. Chair, if I could add um, that, that the 2020 recipient as well will be honored uh, in the fall at a council meeting. If maybe I, I could have that in a, a motion as well, then we can put those, uh, those actions into play to plan that. So do you need two motions or can we go with just one? It'll just be the one. Okay, and you've got that, Pam? Yeah, I've got um, that staff in consultation with the committee be directed to investigate options to improve the museum wall of honor program and bring a staff report for consideration to a future committee of the whole and further that the recipient of the 2020 museum wall of honor be recognized at a future council meeting. Wow. Can I get a mover and a seconder for that? Harvey, how about you? I'll move, sure. And seconded by? Ron. Okay, Ron. All in favor? It yes. looks to be carried. Thank you. Um, do I also need a motion to, well, I, I don't know. We, we, we just put the work plan up and it's something that's ongoing. So I'm not certain that we need to receive that because it's a living document uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, we, uh, that we constantly up, update our staff uh, in their infinite wisdom uh, will advise us what that's happening. Okay. Um, now under unfinished business, okay. Verbal update uh, re re regarding wall of honor and then expanding virtual exposure. Now we touched on that a little bit earlier in the meeting. Um, is that you Vanessa or is that Heather or I'm gonna let Vanessa take this one just because she's the social media person. I'm I'm old enough now to start to I'll I'll go to the younger people for the social media and virtual exhibits. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, so um, now that I'll be entering a little bit more of a collection, well, I am entering a collections role as well. The focus is going to be to get that in order so that we can develop essentially more online exhibits and virtual experiences through our, our collection and through the use of our collection. Um, and this, this company, again, Treasured, uh, they've developed that 3D online virtual museum experience where you can, we can bring the exhibits that are in the museum to life on the screen. Um, and so I think in 2022, that's gonna be a big focus is the virtual components and how to get stories out there. Um, and, it, and, it, and it serves many purposes. It's entertainment purposes, it's educational purposes. A lot of teachers utilize 
uh, these items. Um, accessibility, I'm big on AODA and, and uh, making everything accessible as much as possible to everyone. Um, so for example, even like, unfortunately you can't get upstairs in the log cabin there. We don't have a, um, unless you walk up the stairs. So bringing that downstairs, essentially that, you know, we could use our iPads and have a virtual experience that is on the main level while in person, but also bring the main level and the top level online for anybody that just can't physically get to the grounds themselves. Now it serves the community as a whole. It serves all individuals um, and it serves even farther beyond that. Like uh, we become accessible to anybody in the world, essentially. Like if, if you search us, you'll find us. Um, so it's, it's just really looking at different interactive ways to do things online. And it's, it's really, the world is your oyster in this situation. There's so much that you can do. And this specific platform that we've been um, using, we did a, just a one exhibit trial kind of package with them. And it's really user-friendly. And so it streamed what line so well that, uh, the user when like the the visitor sorry not the user the visitor gets a really crisp and clean and clear vision of what you're trying to portray so we're going to focus on that and um yeah i don't know if anybody has any input on that joan no i have none okay well um, I was speaking with our um, our social media person, the person who puts out press releases and everything in Bradford, and we've been piggybacking on the county system of, uh, I guess you've seen, seen kind of like a hub that you don't think you to get the website up and you're, you're complaining about a crack in your sidewalk and everything else. But apparently there's more AODA work to be done on that, and I'm not certain that the county is, uh, is going to be... Uh, that interested in that we may have to, have to spend fifty thousand dollars ourselves to do that. So, and I'm not really certain about. Um, I, I should have uh, queried her a little bit more uh, about. You know, uh, when you're talking about AODA, it's it's more than people just uh, you know have mobility uh, issues. It's also uh, um, you know um, uh, sense issues. Uh, um, uh, the, you know, uh, or, um, you know, being able to even even sit here and use a keyboard and such like that. So I don't know where we go with that, but uh, I, I'm with you on that AODA thing. Yeah. And we utilize um, every, every font that we use is sans serif. So it's all rounded case letters. Because um, like from a visual standpoint, um, it's harder to read letters that have the lines like Times New Roman, for example, is not AODA acceptable. Um, so the little things, now this is obviously if you have vision. So there are ideas such as um, playback, like um, vocal playback. Um, there are programs where you can press a button or click something and a voice will read to you what you're not able to see or will just be a descriptor for you on what you're not able to see if there's a photograph or a video. Um, and uh, sense-wise, well, I guess there wouldn't be any smell, but um, there's, it, it's, it's, the technology out there is pretty interesting. It's pretty cool. Okay, great. I'm glad you guys are thinking ahead of me. <laughs> I'm not too old to learn and we're trying uh, to be more active on social media too like the Facebook and uh, Twitter and Instagram world um, hopefully one day we'll be able to like um, have live interaction you know so if there's let's just say there's a town event wherever or there's a museum specific event happening we can go live to the people and say this is happening come on down check us out or you know um, 
some a staff member that's in the museum can take it through the collection and you can see some of the collection live or we could have you know um i could i you know i could teach you how to research your home live or just so much that you can do and now that we have we'll we'll have more of a capacity to plan that well as um the fact that the way the layout that we have i'll let you go in a sec fran um Anyway, uh, the, the layout we have is uh, uh, physically is you probably need a car uh, yeah. up in this area because there's no subway running from, uh, you know, from Cookstown to, uh, to Alliston and down to Bradford. Although the county does have a new bus system they put in that connects our town with your town uh, mm -hmm. every hour. And uh, I know some people have actually ventured up there to try restaurants and stuff. And we'll see what happens after COVID. Uh, but, you know, before, if somebody worked at, uh, you know, one of the plants up there, and the job was out of the question if you didn't have, uh, uh, you know, transportation. But this, this, where somebody can visit the museum from anywhere, yeah. including, uh, you know, uh, South Africa or someplace like that yeah. is exciting. Uh, so I'm going to say keep up the good work and Councillor Sainsbury. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, do we need money in the budget for this process that you're going to begin, or is it just part of internal workings because of IT department? Um, I think we're what we're doing right now is we have the work plan that we've shown you, but the work plan that we will have for ourselves is significantly more detailed. And then there'll be there will be budget items that will be attached to that. Uh, we're just starting our budget. Well, I mean we're just starting to seriously talk about budget planning. Uh, again, Vanessa was three days a week and I've been in here about a month. So uh, we're kind of toddlers right now, but we think big and we dream big. <laughs> I think more, more, more than likely we'll be told to slow down rather than speed up uh, given our personalities. So, um, but yes, you're, the short answer is yes. That it, some of these may have budget uh, items attached to it. Uh, we just haven't got them flushed out right now, but uh, we'll definitely be, Again, I think the work plan will get updated in more detail as we go. Uh, and it, that if we have budget items for anything that we're thinking about, yes, we need to start thinking about that to include. Can you but, shuffle uh, within budgets, Heather? Can you shuffle within budgets? Uh, like well, if we don't have to buy a lot of artifacts for whatever reason next year, um, can we move money around just to keep the, the overall budget down so but i uh, we i've always felt that parks and recreation that kind of get the lion's share of the little pie and i've always been pushing for a bigger piece of pie for culture yes uh i agree <laughs> keep that in mind uh -huh. <laughs> i agree but also i think that uh, a lot of this is time rather than money although it, it's the same thing a lot of times uh, so I think it's the, the value of the time that we're going to have having two individuals working full time at this. Uh, so a, a large chunk of this is the time that would be put into it for, for me or Vanessa to develop these things. Um, and we do seem to have uh, the capability to do these things. But uh, things like video, for example, is definitely something we've talked about and are interested in. We, we both enjoy with other museums when they do the behind the scenes kind of uh, videos. Like the British Museum is a good one, good example of that. Uh, they have great online content for behind the scenes. Um, so uh, that may like that might be a camera or something that we have. A, so that's the type of thing. Yes, that might be a budgetary item, but we'd also be sharing probably with the department. It wouldn't be something we purchase for ourselves. We'd be sharing. Maybe the people who do the fitness classes have a camera that we can borrow. So it's all. So yes, but we're hoping, obviously, we're always going to be fiscally conservative uh, as much as we can be. And you're still doing parks and recreation, or are you mostly culture now at the museum with Vanessa? I'm exclusively culture and events. Very good. Okay. Mm -hmm. I saw your bigger hat for many years. <laughs> uh, uh, Harvey, did you have your hand up? No. Okay. No, not right when now. When my screen uh, flashes yellow, then I think somebody wants to speak. And that's what's happening with Joan and, uh, and me. Uh, anyway. Um, would that be something that, you're, you're Mr. Chair, would, would that be something that people would like to have? Uh, 
to have a set of cards? I mean, it's only yes, no, or maybe. <laughs> the yellow, red, and green. Oh, sure. I got a and set they of could cards. Be, they could be mailed to the members of the board. Because I think it's it, it shows you what we're trying. If we're just kind of waving our hand, and you're not too sure if we're waving at someone passing the window. <laughs> well, I'm good with that. But I have my set from the county because I'm the alternate county councillor. Right. But, um, but I'm the chair, so I don't need it. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, listen, uh, I think we've had a really great talk today. And uh, uh, I think, you know, we're... History is so important. Even even your own family history. Go back. Uh, uh, even your own uh, you know roots, whether they're European or Asian or South Asian or uh, or African or uh, indigenous to uh, America. It's all North America. Sorry, I, even though I'm related to one out of every six, you know the six degrees of separation in the in the U.S. I'm related because of ancestry from uh, New England and such like that. I don't consider myself an American. I'm a Canadian. And I think that, that being a Canadian is so important because there's a reason why people still want to come here. There's a reason why we were thought so highly in the world. There was a reason. Am I allowed to do this? Can I rant? There was a reason why the Underground Railroad ended in, in Upper Canada. There was a reason why Lieutenant Governor Pinto passed the first legislation in the British Empire to abolish slavery or attempt to abolish slavery. Um, and he got recalled to Britain in 1796 for that. And I, and I really just hope that uh, all of the people that are really interested in culture now understand history and, and look at it from all sides. Uh, because we didn't have to have a civil war where 750,000 people died. Um, and we didn't have... I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going after low fruit here. I'm just saying that uh, uh, I believe Canada is different and still upheld in the world, and I think we can work all this out. And uh, I think the museum of the Earth will play its role, and uh, so will all of us. Anyway, I'm off my soapbox now. I don't want to watch the news anymore. VR after COVID and. Uh, and uh, the crack in the ice and the, the snow on Snow Valley Hill. <laughs> I don't want to get on them either. Anyway, uh, anybody else? Uh, because we're actually uh, at the uh, um, item five, which is new business. And we don't seem to have any. Any new business? Okay. Uh, items for the next agenda. I think I just encourage that if anyone is thinking of uh, items, I know there was a fence uh, included and uh, was that the work plan mentioned a fence. So anything that would have a budgetary impact, we should be really even like next year, we should be discussing it even earlier, but um, just to yeah, make sure we bring those to the next meeting to keep, to keep on the timeline of the, the budget deliberations. And I trust Councillor Sainsbury who has her thumb on the budget um, town of New Dakota, that she will be a great advocate for the museum. Always. <laughs> she sure is. Okay. Um, so, so we don't have any items for the next agenda, but we have, uh, and I don't know what the next date is because we've already pre done the dates. Um, so I'm going to look for a, a motion to adjourn uh, until the, the next meeting. Uh, now let Pam figure that one out. And, uh, oh, go ahead. August 25th. Okay, August 25th. Okay. So I need a, mo uh, a mover and a seconder for that. I move. Jones okay, speaking. Jones. Yeah, and seconded by Ron. I'm just looking for volunteers here. <laughs> <laughs> any any other business? Anybody want to say anything? It's onward and upward, guys. Uh, just Ron, enjoy Canada Day. Just enjoy Canada Day. Exactly. And seniors, seniors month for most of us. Well, not the staff, <laughs> but 
with the members of the board. <laughs> I want my pension increased. Uh, Ron? No, just Mr. Chair saying that uh, moving forward, I think it's going to be for, uh, especially for Heather and Vanessa, it's going to be a very uh, exciting and challenging time. But um, if one thing I've learned through this whole last 15 months or whatever is that um, it's expanded my horizons because now with some of the groups I'm involved with, you're dealing with people across this wonderful country of ours instead of just in our local area. And uh, been exposed to a lot of things that you possibly would not have been before. And I think this, moving forward, the museum's gonna have a marvelous opportunity to, to spread itself uh, across Canada. And as Vanessa has pointed out and Heather too, like we're now open to the world. So it, it's going right. to be a great time to great time to be a Canadian. That's right. Yeah. Well, I always felt it was great to be a Canadian ever since I can remember, but uh, it can be better. <laughs> anyway, okay, when you uh, say, Mr. Chair, when you say to your granddaughter, we're going to make a pie, let's get the rolling pin. What's a rolling pin? Why don't no. we just go to Zayers and buy a pie? <laughs> I was going to get her a telephone with a dial on it. <laughs> yeah, and I said, well, it's up there on the old dough board. Well, what's the dough board? Well, it's hanging on my kitchen wall here. <laughs> that was my great grandma's. <laughs> and it said so really old. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I must admit, I don't make pies with another one of those either. <laughs> anyway. Well, if you have apple pie, you can send one down to Bradford. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Uh, so uh, I'm going to, uh, all in favor of adjourning the meeting. Carried.